Hello and welcome to Ecoholics. Today we are going to learn a very interesting concept which is known as the steady state. Now when we talk about any economic growth model or any economic growth theory, we always look around this concept of steady state equilibrium, steady state level of economy. But what exactly is the steady state? So let's understand the concept of steady state. When we talk about the concept of steady state, it basically arrives from the theory of equilibrium. Okay, now equilibrium uh, usually refers to when there are two components and we equate those two components. However, when we talk about the steady state growth, we are talking about numerous variables, numerous uh, variables that impact or influence the growth of the economy and how they are going to be growing in that steady state. Right now, when we talk about the steady state, these variables can be, let's say, output or it can be population, it can be the capital stock, right? It can be the investment that is happening in the economy. It can be the technical progress that happens in the economy over a period of time. So steady state usually is not a particular point in time. It often is the period that is denoted to be the steady state in which the economy is. Now, in this state, the economy will experience not many fluctuations, but a standardization of population. Let's say the birth rate and the death rate are reasonably constant or they are equal to each other or they are not fluctuating as much. Right. Then if we talk from the point of view of technical progress, so the technical progress also is uh, not stagnant or neither it's changing a lot. So it's going to be uh, reasonably constant or reasonably um, uh, increasing from uh, the technical progress is happening or the technology is changing, but the fluctuations are not there. So the fluctuations usually impact the economy in a negative way. Let's say if there is a certain growing economy and a major technical change happens around the world. Now the economy will have to adjust to it and so there will be a lot of fluctuations in prices and commodities and the quality of the commodities and export import and many other things. However, when we talk about steady state growth, it means that the adjustment is happening automatically and the economy is growing at a steady rate or in a steady path. So here the consistency is the major formula for a steady state growth and which is why all the economists whenever we talk from the point of view of various economic growth models. So whether we are talking about Haradama model or we are talking about John Robinson's model or we are talking about uh, Solo's model or Mead's model or any other model. We are actually talking about the steady state equilibrium path. But what is the steady state equilibrium path for a certain economy? How the economy is going to grow but it's not going to be a jerky path. Rather it's going to be a smooth and consistent path. So then we talk about the steady state path, right? Now let's understand what the different economists had to say about the steady state equilibrium. So starting from, uh, let's say, Harrod's model. Now Harrod Dahmer model was a major, successful, most prominent model that all the uh, students study initially when they start studying the economic growth models, right? So, uh, Harrod had given this steady state growth definition by including warranted growth which was equated with the natural growth rate, right? So, we all know that Harrod, in the Harrod's model, there are three types of growth rates. There is actual growth rate, then there is warranted growth rate, which is also the full capacity growth rate. And then there is natural growth rate, which is like a ceiling growth rate. So steady state growth will be achieved according to Harrod's definition when the full capacity or the warranted growth rate will be equal to the natural growth rate or the ceiling growth rate. Then when we talk from the point of view of John Robinson, Joan Robinson again was another very important economist who had uh, majorly done her work 
in economic growth concepts as well as in microeconomics, uh, market uh, stability, market competition and all of such facets of economics has also described the path of steady state growth as the golden age of accumulation, right? Um, there are various golden ages that actually Robinson's model then later talks about and they are quite interesting according to how a population or any other variable is going to be included or excluded and that refers to that part of golden age. However, the economy when it reaches a certain stage where capital accumulation and all various other variables are in place, then that becomes golden age of accumulation as referred to Joan Robinson, right? Then when we talk about James Mead, another very important economist uh, who has given growth models uh, in a very mathematical manner. So James Mead, uh, according to James Mead, the state of steady state growth is when the growth rate of the total income or the growth rate of total income and the growth rate of income per head, okay, are constant with population growing at a constant proportionate rate. Now, uh, population will not be growing at a constant rate because it's population, but proportionately it's constant. When we talk about ratio and proportion, right? So, proportionately it's constant. So, Mead has actually referred to some intricate uh, and interesting variables so as to present the steady state growth path and so according to him when there is no change in the rate of technical progress me meaning that over that period of time the technical progress remains constant and then there is the constant rate of growth of income per head along with the total income so that becomes the path of steady state growth Usually when we refer to these various models, you will have a lot of equations to understand and you might find it very difficult. However, you always should remember the crux of the concept because only when the theory is given, the crux, the um, final summary statement is given of a particular growth model, from that itself we derive a certain equation. So equation is nothing but the facts or the theory concepts are just put in that particular equation and so the equation is formed. So there is nothing really mathematical in nature, it's just the application of theory into a specific model and which is why when you learn the concept, you understand the uh, concepts or the terms, these terms are going to be very important for, from the exam point of view also, so that you will not just remember the theory but also are going to remember the equations of that particular growth model. And then finally, we also talk about Robert Solow's model. So Robert Solow's model is a well-known neoclassical growth model and he also has demonstrated the growth path or the steady state growth path as is determined by the expansion of labor force, expansion of labor force which means that there is population angle definitely here and the technical progress. Now these two, these two are uh, in, in a way non-economic elements. So there is labor force which is expanding and the technical progress which is also increasing. So these are external to the growth model as given by Robert Solow, right? And uh, uh, however, Robert Solow has emphasized that the steady state equilibrium path can be achieved when we have the determinants, these two determinants are also present along with the actual determinants or elements of the growth as taken by Solow. So in all, we have uh, taken the examples of these different growth models to understand what can we um, summarize with the 
कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टडी स्टेट इक्विलिब्रियम और द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टडी स्टेट सो आई होप दैट इट्स क्लियर टू यू ऑल एंड वी विल ब्रिंग टू यू मोर सच इंटरेस्टिंग टर्म्स एंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स स्टेट यून टू इकोहॉलिक्स थैंक यू